Mama jabs Andy. Annie falls off the plank. She hits the water. A loud splash. Bran cries out. Bran, no. Bran dashes forward, out of line. Mikey, Bran. Before the Fratelli brothers can stop, Bran leaps over the side of the ship. We hear a splash. Bran sinks under the deep water. Mikey hides his eyes, scared, trembling. Mama turns to the kids. She gives a vicious smile. Mama, two down. Who's next? Underwater. Andy sinks to the bottom of the deep pool, hands tied behind her back. Andy holds her breath, cheeks puffed with air. Bran floats downward a few feet above Andy. He struggles with the rope binding his hands. With a few twists of his wrist, Bran's hands come free. He swims toward Andy. That seemed a little too easy. He grabs Andy. Her eyes are wavering, nearly unconscious. Bran puts his arm around Andy, holding tight. He swims upward, using all of his strength. Bran swims toward the surface and pulls Andy onto a rock next to the ship. Exterior rock next to pirate ship. Bran leans over the unconscious Andy, giving her mouth to mouth. Andy suddenly wakes. She lifts up, coughing. Bran holds her, comforting her. She composes herself, giving a puzzled look to Bran. Andy, where am? Oh, she suddenly remembers. You jumped in to save me? Bran gives a modest nod. Andy throws her arms around Bran, planting a long, hard kiss on his lips. A few moments pass. Andy breaks the kiss. She withdraws her lips. A puzzled expression covers her face. She reaches into Bran's mouth and seems to be feeling for something. Puzzled, she withdraws her fingers, looking at Bran. Andy, what happened to your braces? Bran, I don't wear braces. Mikey wears. She suddenly understands. They both stop and look at each other. Andy, oh God. Cut to top deck. Mouth and Steph have been tied together, back to back. They are walking the plank. A few inches from the end, Mama stands behind them, jabbing them with the sword, edging them forward. Steph looks back to Mouth, an honest, serious expression in her eyes. Steph, how long can you hold your breath? Mouth, an hour. Steph, be serious now. Mouth, actually, about ten seconds. You're always champion of that underwater stuff. Steph, Clark, when you run out of air. Just turn your face to me, and I'll share whatever I've got left. Mouth looks at Steph. He is so touched by this, he cannot speak for the first time in his life. It's probably the second time.、Um, Mama jabs Mouth and Steph. They go off the edge. Suddenly, a loud pirate scream pierces the air. Everyone turns to the direction of the scream. Sloth, swinging down from the ship's mast. He is dressed in bright pirate clothing. A sword is strapped to his waist. Sloth emits another loud scream. Before Mouth and Steph hit the water, Sloth scoops them up, saving their lives, carrying Mouth and Steph under his arm. Sloth swings back onto the deck. He safely places Mouth and Steph beside the other kids. Sloth turns to Mama and the boys. Sloth growls. He flexes his muscles. His shirt begins to rip, tear, muscles bulging. For the first time, we see that Sloth has an incredible muscular body. He has transformed from a grotesque creature into a virtual superhero. Steph stares at Sloth, awestruck. Steph, Hunk City. With everyone's attention focused on Sloth, Chunk sneakily climbs over the ship's side. His torn and tattered clothes have now taken on the appearance of a pirate costume. Chunk sneaks up behind the kids. They are shocked to see him. Bran, Chunk, Chunk, Captain Chunk. Chunk begins to untie the kids' hands. Brand is, Brand is on the rock with Andy, but for some reason, oh, I guess they're seeing it from where they are. Chunk begins to untie the kids' hands. Meanwhile, Mama points to Sloth. He snaps at Francis and Jake. Mama, get him! The two come at Sloth. Their swords are extended, ready for a fight. Francis swings his sword at Sloth. Sloth ducks. He picks up Francis, lifting him above his head. Sloth throws his brother through the air. Francis flies inside of the ship's furrow head. Francis's head breaks through the woman's figurehead. 
This creates a bizarre image, the shapely body of a figurehead adorned with the head of the unconscious Francis. Chung still unties the kids. Mikey works with him, speeding up the process. Sloth continues his sword fight with Jake. Sloth fights like the expert pirate he's seen on TV. Data. Pinchers of peril! Data fires his clamping teeth. The teeth clamp down on Jake's crotch, doubling him over. Sloth grabs the sword from Jake's hand and breaks it into two. Sloth throws a hard punch to Jake's jaw. The powerful punch sends Jake flying across the deck floor. He skids into a pyramid of cannonballs. Knock. He's out cold. Chunk has untied all of the kids. They run to the side of the ship. Beneath them, Annie and Bran wade in the water. Bran shouts to his friends, Bran, come on, jump! The kids jump over the side, into the water. Meanwhile, Mama finds herself face to face with Sloth. Sloth growls at her. Mama holds her sword, trying to reason with Sloth. Mama, okay, so maybe I treated you bad. Keeping you locked in that room, it was for your own good. Sloth gives a loud growl. He walks towards Mama, ready to attack. Mama pleads, frightened. Mama, I ain't always been bad to you. Don't you remember when you were a little one? I'd sang you to sleep. Sloth grabs the sword from Mama. He throws it overboard. He picks up Mama in his arms, ready to throw her overboard. She begins to sing. Mama, rock of my baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. He pauses, listening. The song is warm, comforting. It brings a pleasant smile to his face. He begins to gently rock Mama in his arms. She continues to sing. Mama, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Sloth smiles. He drops Mama overboard. As she falls, Sloth sings the final verse. Sloth, and down when the baby, cradle and all. Mama hits the water. Meanwhile, the kids are all in the water. They have begun their escape, swimming to the shore. Sloth jumps into the water. He swings toward the kids. When Sloth makes it to the kids, Chunk introduces him. Chunk, guys, this is Sloth. He's just like us, a reject. Aboard the pirate ship, Mama climbs back onto the deck, soaking wet. She sees the kids swimming away. Her eyes are angry, frustrated, but there is something more important on her mind. She runs to Jake. He still lies beside the cannonball pile, somehow still alive. Dazed, Mama slaps him. He stirs. Mama, wake up. Get Francis. Let's go get the rest of the goods. Interior treasure cabin. Mama, Jake and Francis enter. They greedily begin to stuff their pockets with the treasure. Mama walks to where One-Eyed Willie is seated. She reaches for the pile of treasure in front of One-Eyed Willie. Mama grabs the pile, but it is attached to a long metal chain. Mama pulls hard on the chain. This begins another of One-Eyed Willie's chain reaction booby traps. One-Eyed Willie's skeleton shoots upward toward the ceiling. A trap door in the ceiling opens. Mama and the boys watch in shock. Top deck. One-Eyed Willie's skeleton flies through the trap door on the catapult's deck. He lands directly in front of the ship's steering wheel. In Rube Goldberg fashion, the trap door hits a cannonball which rolls along a path in the ship's deck, which is connected to a long section of wood that stretches to the cavern ceiling. The wood is connected to the ceiling. The wood is connected to the ceiling's support system. The cannonball hits the section of wood, causing the wood to snap, causing the entire support system to become undone. The entire cavern begins to shudder, rumble. The pirate ship tilts, shakes. The sails bucket. The ship's anchors rise. The goonies and sloth have waded to the shore. They quickly haul out of the boat, dashing to the cavern entrance. The entire cabin begins to shake, like an earthquake. The ground begins to shake, opening. The walls begin to crack, crumble. Pieces of rock begin to fall, crashing to the ground. Mama and the boys have to run onto the top of the tilting ship deck, running for their lives. But they tumble and roll across the deck. They fall off the trembling ship, into the water. The Goonies arrive at the cavern entrance. Boulders and earth fall in front of the entrance, causing it to collapse. Sloth moves forward, not unlike Samson. Sloth holds out his mighty arms. He grabs each side of the cavern walls, holding them in place. He supports the crumbling ceiling with his strong back. 
This keeps the passageway open. Sloth motions for the kids to hurry inside. The kids crawl through his legs, out of the cavern. Rocks and boulders fall all around Sloth, but he doesn't budge, doesn't flinch. All of the kids have crawled to safety. Chunk is the last to join them. Sloth turns, ready to join the kids, but something catches his eye. He sees Mama and his brothers in the water, struggling for their lives. Chunk holds out his hand to Sloth. Chunk, Sloth, come on, take my hand. Sloth shakes his head. He turns and gives an innocent kiss to Chunk's cheek. Sloth releases his grip on the wall and ceiling. He steps back out into the cavern. Chunk cries out. Chunk, Sloth, no! An avalanche of falling earth seals the cavern entrance, forming a permanent wall between Chunk and Sloth. Interior pirate ship cavern. The entire cavern is being devastated. The sails fill with wind. The pirate ship begins to move with one-eyed Willie at the wheel. Sloth swims to Mama and the boys. He wraps his enormous arm around them, saving their lives. They look up, seeing the pirate ship shaking in front of them. Interior escape tunnel. The Goonies are trapped in a dark, rumbling, shaking passageway. Both sides of the passageway have begun to cave in, closing in on the trapped Goonies. Bran screams. Bran, Data, we need one of your lights. Data fumbles in his backpack for a light. He reaches back for the last road flare. But, unbeknownst to Data, he hasn't grabbed a road flare. It's the stick of dynamite. Data lights the stick. It sparkles, illuminating the passageway. The Goonies look around. They see the crumbling dirt coming at them from both sides. There is no way out. Suddenly, Data notices something strange about the flare. Data. Hey, this isn't a road flare. It's... It's... Total shock. Dynamite! The kids turn and run. Data runs in circles, trying to find a place for the sparkling dynamite. He sees a crack in the wall, emitted a small amount of light. Data inserts the dynamite into the crack. Data runs to his friends. They cluster together, ears plugged, eyes closed. Boom! The dynamite rocks the already quivering passageway. A few moments pass. The kids open their eyes through the smoke. The dynamite has blown a large hole into the wall an opening leading to the outside world. The excited Goonies run toward the hole. They exit, seconds before the passageway collapses. Exterior escape tunnel dawn. The Goonies stand in a small rocky alcove. The stretch of ocean is in front of them. The heavy rumbling becomes a muffled echo in the background. One-eyed Willie's cavern and passageway are being sealed forever. The Goonies pause to breathe in the fresh sea air. Their bodies are scratched and bruised, covered with mud and dirt. Their clothes are in tatters, hanging like rags. They have gone through a visual transformation from goon kids to courageous adventurers. Exterior beach day. A national park ranger slams on the dune buggy brakes, squinting curiously into the distance, now raises his binoculars to get a better look. His jaw drops as he reaches for his radio. Ranger into radio. Harvey? Get the sheriff on the horn. I think I just found that bunch of goobers he's been looking for. Exterior range station and beach day. The ranger station parking lot is packed. Sheriff's cars, ambulances, local press, parents and onlookers. The goonies emerge from the range station as the crowd cheers and the parents rush forward to meet their kids. Closer angle. Irene rushes up to Mikey and Brand. Mr. Walsh and Rosalita can be seen farther back in the crowd. Mikey looks up at Irene with embarrassed eyes. Mikey. Hi, Mom. Guess we're dead meat, huh? Irene can't hide her smile or the happy tears in her eyes. She wraps her arms around Mikey and Bran, embracing them tightly. Omit. Another angle. Chunk runs to an obese man and woman. His parents. The man is dressed exactly like Chunk. Hawaiian shirt plaid Bermuda shorts, black knee socks. The woman wears a flowery dress, holds a cardboard box covered with tinfoil. Chunk embraces his parents. Mom, Lawrence, we were so worried. Holds out proudly. Here, darling, I wrapped supper for you. It's your favorite. Mom gives the foiled wrapper a carton to Chunk. He grabs it excitedly, rips the foil away. Hot dogs, loaded with everything. Camera pants to mouth and step. Mouth looks at Steph, a serious, honest look on his face. 
He speaks in his own voice. <laughs> Mouth. Just wanted to say, well, thanks, you know, for saving me and all. I really appreciate it. Steph, shocked. Wow, a real moment. You know, your voice is nice when you're not using your mouth. Mouth. You know, your face is pretty when you blur your eyes. Camera pans to Andy and Mikey. Watching. Smiling. Andy turns to Mikey, a warm smile on her face. Andy. Mikey, you just keep kissing girls the way you do, and the other parts of you that don't work so good are going to catch up with the parts that do. Bran walks up. He puts his arm around Andy. They walk away together, camera following. Bran gives Andy an impressed look. Bran, lifetime goonie? Andy, you bet. She grabs Bran and kisses him. Mikey stands a few feet away, watching, alone, jealous. He begins to cough. He removes his Promethean mist, ready to take a shot. He pauses, looks at the breathalyzer, then tosses it on the ground. Who needs it? Through the crowd, Mr. Walsh has noticed, smiles proudly. Suddenly, everyone is interrupted. A group of policemen rush to the shore. Angle on Sloth. Sloth walks out of the ocean, dragging the waterlogged Mama, Jake, and Francis. The police quickly take Mama and the boys into custody. Chunk's eyes light up, seeing Sloth. He runs to him, holding out his carton of hot dogs. Chunk, Sloth! Sloth! Sloth gives a happy grunt, glad to see his friend. He picks up Chunk, who offers him the carton. Chunk, look, hot dogs! Sloth, singing happily with instant recognition. Hot dogs, armor hot dogs. Sorry, I don't know how to sing that. Sloth devours a giant hot dog in a single gulp as Chunk's parents watch in horrid awe. Chunk, shyly, he's my new best friend, and Dad... If they take away our house and we have to move to New York, I thought maybe we could adopt him, get him a job with the New York Jets or with the Rangers as head goalie. I just want to say, wait, so Chunk? Chunk's family is going to move to New York? That's way more expensive than where he is now. Slop destroys another hot dog, belches volcanically, and Chunk's parents exchanged a paralyzed look. Another angle. Mama and the boys are handcuffed, then put into the back of a police van. Camera pans as Mr. Perkins and Troy suddenly pull up in a white Cadillac convertible, screech to a shop. They get out quickly, approaching Mr. Walsh, who stands at the edge of the crowd with Mikey. Mr. Perkins advances aggressively, wavering a piece of paper. Perkins, today's the day, Walsh, so let's get this over with. Your house is blocking the start of our new first fairway. So, I decided to begin the demolition with you. Walsh. If... If you could just hold off for a bit, Mr. Perkins. Maybe... Maybe I can find it. Troy. Oh, come on, old man. My daddy doesn't have all day. There's 50 more houses to destroy after yours. Perkins. Yelling off. Sheriff! You come on over here and witness this. Mr. Walsh nervously takes out his promethean mist, then looks down at Mikey, who stares back up, tears in his eyes. Mikey. I'm sorry, Dad. We had our hand on the future, but... His lower lip starts to quiver. We blew it. We threw it all away to save our lives. Mr. Walsh fights to hold back a tear. Walsh. You and Brand are back, safe, with your mother and me. Grits his teeth, throws away the promethean mist. That makes us the richest people in Cauldron Point. Perkins. Walsh? They turn. Mr. Perkins grins cruelly. Perkins. You're looking at the richest people in Cauldron Point. Now sign it. Troy props the paper up against his father's back for signature. Whips out a pen with a sickening smile. Troy. Here. Use my pen. I'll even let you keep it as a souvenir. Mr. Walsh tries to steady himself, trembling, looks off. Angle on Goonie crowd. The crowd is hustled as the rest of the Goonies and their parents turn to Walsh helplessly. Back to scene. Mr. Walsh slowly takes the pen from Troy, lifting an unsteady arm, stares at the paper, eyes misting over. He starts to sign as the sheriff takes a sympathetic step forward, stopping him. Sheriff. Now listen up, Mr. Parkins. 
Maybe this isn't the proper time or place to, Perkins. I'm not interested in your ethical opinion, Sheriff. Just your signature as a witness. If you've been doing your duty, if you've been on the ball, you'd have found my son's car by now. Isn't that right? Sheriff spits in disgust. Poot. Ah, hell. Suddenly looks off. I already found your son's damn car. Troy, excited. You did? Where is it? Sheriff, pointing. Just about to run you over, Troy. Mr. Walsh grits his teeth, oblivious to everything. He begins to sign as Perkins turns, and the signature is written across the back of his jacket. Angle on gorillas and red Mustang. Their point of view. The red Mustang careens into the parking lot at high speed. The gorilla is behind the wheel. It heads straight for the crowd, spinning out at the last second, squealing sideways, crashing into the side of Mr. Perkins' white Cadillac, Troy. Daddy, your new car! The gorilla scream back at Troy with equal excitement, covering their eyes. Bonzo whips the car into reverse, roars off through the crowd as bystanders dive for safety. Angle on crowd. One entire side of the white Cadillac is caved in. The stunned crowd suddenly bursts into cheering, applause, and laughter. Perkins, purple with rage. Don't you people laugh at me. No one ever laughs at me. The laughter grows louder. Even Mr. Walsh and Mikey start to join in. Angle on edge of crowd. Sloth watches from the rear edge of the crowd. To one side of him is Chunk. To the other, Rosalita. They all laugh heartily with everyone else as suddenly Sloth's expression begins to change. His eyes roll. He begins to cough, feeling curious rumbling in his stomach. The crowd's laughter continues as he pounds himself to his chest, trying to clear his massive airway as a gleaming object ejects itself from his mouth. Angle on Rosalita. The object hits the ground at Rosalita's feet. She looks down curiously, then picks it up, eyes widening. That's gross. With surprise. It is a huge sparkling diamond. Back to Sloth. Sloth is doubled over now. Inner explosions racking his huge body. A concerned Chunk rushes over to him. Chunk. Sloth? Sloth! Trying to yell over a crowd's laughter. Somebody get a giant bromo! Quick! Sloth straightens up, looking at his friend. His mouth falls open. It is filled with jewels from the pirate ship. Gross. Back to Rosalita. Seeing, realizing, holding the diamond up high, she starts to make her way through the boisterous crowd, back to Perkins. The furious Perkins slams the paper down on what's left of the hood of his car, turns to Mr. Walsh. The crowd's laughter is beginning to subside. Perkins, had your fun, Walsh? Well, that's okay. I've got the rest of my life to laugh at you. Troy holds out the pen. The crowd quiets as Mr. Walsh exchanges a sad look with Mikey. Then takes it, reluctantly, leans over the hood of the car. Angle on Data. Data stands with his parents, his eyes glassed over. He looks off at Mouth, who stands with Steph nearby. Data, a whisper. I sure am gonna miss being a goonie. Uh, I can't, this page, okay. With a heavy sigh, Mr. Walsh starts to put his pen to paper. Then, Rosalita's voice from middle of crowd in Spanish. Wait! Don't sign! Mr. Walsh looks up, momentarily pausing, then leans over the hood again, ignoring Rosalita's voice as the crowd rumbles curiously. Rosalita's voice in Spanish. Don't sign! Don't sign! How does she know what's going on? Back to mouth and Steph. Steph turns curiously. You speak Spanish? What's she saying? Mouth. Don't. Thinking. Don't. Don't sit down. No. Don't shoot. Don't throw up. Don't, suddenly realizing. Don't sign! Back to Walsh. Mr. Walsh had begun to write his signature as Mouth and Steph rush up. Mikey rushes up. Rosalita rushes up. Everyone, don't sign! Mikey grabs the piece of paper, pulling Mr. Walsh's pen across it in a straight line. Perkins and Troy stare unbelievingly at Rosalita holding up a diamond to a dumbfounded Mr. Walsh and Chunk's voice. Hey, Goonies! Look! Angle on Chunk. Chunk raises his cupped hands, now opens them. Close on Chunk's hand, filled with gemstones, sparkling diamonds, glorious rubies, bright emeralds. Back to scene, sloth belches. 
Three more jewels are ejected from his mouth. The crowd cheers as the goonies rush to sloth, swarming over him like mountain climbers. Jewels erupted from his mouth as they pummeled him like a huge vending machine. Several reporters rush up, snapping pictures, peppering the goonies with questions. Sheriff, newly arrived at Chunk. Telling more stories, Lawrence? Chunk. Wait, this time I'm telling the truth, Sheriff. Honest. The sheriff smiles patronizingly, turns, starts to walk away. He sees something in the distance, stops, thunderstruck. Sheriff. Holy Mary, mother of God. Jaw drops. Look. Everyone turns to look with audible gasps. As we see, angle on pirate ship, their point of view. The pirate ship sailing across the ocean, a magical sight. Camera pans the faces of everyone on shore. Policemen, the sheriff, Sloth, Irene, Mr. Walsh, the Goonies, staring in awe. Angle on Mikey, the back of Mikey's head. He turns slowly to face the audience, wearing the black patch of one-eyed Willie. Mikey winks at all of us with a warm smile. Back to pirate ship. Farther away in the distance now, a graceful romantic D.O.T. against the beautiful horizon as we fade out. The end. Whew! This was a fun read. And if you have seen the movie, you can tell, like, yeah, there's definitely some parts that they took out. Like the whole gorilla situation, that wasn't in the film. Uh, the squid. And then the way they found the jewels, like how Rosalita noticed the jewels and stuff, that that's all pretty different from the movie. But yeah, for the most part, uh, it hasn't really changed compared to the movie. And yeah, I kind of liked how the movie turned out. Oh, also like with um, Mikey wearing an eye patch at the very end. I don't, yeah, I don't think that was in the movie as well. It seems like they went through seven drafts for this film. But yeah, I hope you guys like this. I'll probably do more table readings. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do shows, but most likely movies. If you have any suggestions, let me know. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the next audiobook I will be reading is Scarlet, which is the second book to Cinder, if you liked that book. Thank you guys for listening. See you guys next time.